All right, this is my first uh, analysis of Southern Copper Company. Uh, really excited about this. Been following the company for a long time. Uh, has done really well for us uh, over the past, I think, year or so uh, since we've held this position. Uh, currently down about, I think, 18% in the name. So uh, looking to add more shares and wanted to just kind of see um, where the company can possibly go. Uh, I did not do uh, a bankruptcy case um, for this company. I don't think it's appropriate currently, but it is something that I do um, enjoy doing and um, will possibly do uh, here shortly. So anyway, let's take a look now. Again, this is the last three years of data, and then we use the current quarter of 2022. Uh, to give us some some current information um, just to kind of tell us where we are uh, but not really using these numbers necessarily uh, in our uh, analysis if i do i will let you know all right so first things first uh i expect cash uh to increase as you can see it's kind of been all over the place up 100 percent down 15 percent uh statistically speaking um it, it can possibly increase or decrease uh, by a thousand. Currently, we're sitting at twenty three fifty five, which is very close to a thousand for uh, a thousand point uh, decrease in that number. But we have another six months to go in a year. Um, so I'm looking at a possible increase there. Um, I have to say that uh, cash increases only uh, when inventory uh, or receivables decrease. So let's take a look at the receivables and inventory. So um, I'm looking at a potential increase in receivables. So that does not tell the story of increasing cash, right? Um, and as we can see, it's consistently increased over the last three years. So I, I don't expect that to change at all. I did do uh, uh, an average increase though. Instead of using the statistical uh, deviation number here, um, I used an, an just an average, which is really close uh to to what this number is anyway but the difference is is that because the increase has been so consistent and has been the same i'm going to assume it's going to remain uh the same instead of using that uh, standard deviation number which i think puts it at uh 18 uh, 18.25 maybe versus 18.22 it, it's very close all right uh inventory uh, inventory has kind of been up and down. Uh, a lot of that has to do with not only production, but also copper prices. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a moment, but uh, the copper price from 19 to 2020 uh, definitely increased. And so that's the reason why you'll see a lot of sales um, and inventory decreasing uh, in that time. Right now we have a decrease in the uh, uh, price of copper. And so um, I expect the inventory number to increase um, again, meaning that we will not see an increase in cash. So that may be a number that we play around with here at the end. All right, taxes. Again, been all over the place, really hard to get a handle on taxes, especially for this company uh, that uh, primarily operates in, in uh, South America where uh, the tax regime is a lot different than what we're used to here in the United States. They're paying like royalties and things of that nature uh, to those those countries. So I don't know where it can end up. Statistically, it says that it can be in the six hundred dollar range right now, six sixty. So I mean, does it stay six sixty? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Does it decrease from there? I don't know. We're just gonna run with the statistics uh, for for now. All right, uh, property and equipment. That number has stayed consistent. I mean, these numbers, I can pull them out to a couple decimal places to see a change, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty consistent. And so um, I, I expect that uh, to remain the case. Um, however, um, what I did do here was statistically, if, if I were to, to add this 20, to 1056 that that gives us to to what 10580 and we're currently at 10609 so see this is one of those situations where i'm using current uh data to 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 give me an idea of what the the, the future holds right because 
typically when, when you add property, you don't dispose of it, especially historically when we see there has been like hardly any uh, change at all um, in um, the, the property and equipment. So um, I'm assuming that the property and equipment number is going to remain flat from where it is now. Maybe it increases a little bit. Um, for whatever reason, maybe it decreases. Uh, again, I think a lot of that may just be accounting. But for now, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it uh, where it is. All right, uh, investments. Um, now, this, this is a relatively small number, uh, not making a huge impact on the bottom line, but it is broken out in the financial, so we definitely have to include it. Um, down 33%, up 1%, so, you know, kind of all over the place. Um, again, this is a situation where, um, you know, statistically, this thing can be any anywhere from like 80 to 140. Currently, it's at 115, and it's always been 115, except back here in, uh, you know, 2019, where it's 170. So it's almost like, does it go back closer to this 170, or does it stay what it has been since 2020, right? I'm going to assume that it stays where it has been since 2020. I don't, I don't think it's going to, to change uh, much at all. All right, right of use assets. Um, again, this has been a number that has been fairly consistent. As you can see, there was a consistent decrease here. And so I just used um, um, a straight up, um, I just used the current data because statistically, you know, this number um, can, can get down to, what is that, 840, but it's currently at 880. So if they decrease these right of use assets, um, that improves cash. Um, and we are looking for something to improve cash, uh, to stay consistent with the numbers. Um, but I don't know if it increases cash that much. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing goes for the property where, um, you know, it, we can see a decrease from this 10 six, right? Um, that'll actually improve cash as well. Um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll play around with it, but um, for now, I'm saying that it'll just remain flat. All right. Okay. So other assets, again, relatively small number, but it is broken out. This has been a consistent increase over the years. And so I assume that that's going to continue and just using a, uh, an, an average uh, growth rate on this thing. Okay. Uh, I got it to. 174 which is very close to what the statistical number is anyway and that gives us total uh, asset uh, balance sheet of 19 8 um, 2021 it was 18 1 so we definitely have an increase there uh, which is not out of the realm of possibility we see a 13 percent increase from 19 to 20 and then a small drop between 20 and 21 so um you know why why not 19.8 currently sitting at uh 16.9 which is a decrease uh from what it was in 2021 so again you know we're saying something has to change uh within the next 12 months to the balance sheet uh to cause this number to jump you know what is that change well the only change that I'm seeing here is in receivables or cash. <laughs> it's only that's the only thing, right? And so um, the only way receivables or cash changes is if uh, we have a lot of sales, right? And so we'll take a look at the income statement and see if maybe um, you know our, our sales um, make any sense for this balance sheet scenario. I really don't know. All right. Uh, payables, uh, payables, uh, you know, most companies really pay attention to this. And so it looks like the management has done fairly well with keeping this number stable, um, with a slight decline every year. So that's good. Um, the problem here though, is that, uh, in 2021, it was 591 currently sitting at 671. Um, uh, but again, these are payables, meaning that these are bills that have not been paid yet. Uh, there's a very good chance 
uh, that they will pay these bills over the course of the next six months. Uh, but doing so does decrease cash. And again, we're looking for something to increase cash. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to assume that we're going to see a small increase um, in these payables. Um, but I don't I don't think we'll have such a large increase because we haven't seen that in the last three years. Plus, I'm not quite sure what payables can increase that much anyway other than maybe labor but most of their labor is in south america which even though they have unions and stuff like that um i don't i don't think south america is experiencing uh any sort of like labor shortage or, or uh problems that we are facing here in the u.s for u.s companies uh dealing with labor all right uh loan balances loan balances have been uh, again pretty stable something that you want to see uh, with the company uh, dropped a little bit and then increased a little bit. Uh, statistically speaking, um, you know, we can be anywhere between 64 to 68. Um, currently it's sitting at 65. So um, do they take on more debt to get them to 68? Maybe, um, you know, rising interest rate environment. Typically you don't take on new debt in those situations. Um, I don't know what their debt situation is looking like right now as far as maturities and whatnot. Um, maybe that's something that I'll look at here in a moment. But um, as of right now, we're saying that, that the debt is going to uh, increase um, even though it currently um, has decreased from 2021 to current. So, again, maybe that's a number that we play around with. I don't know. Um, all right. Taxes. Um, now, taxes has uh, consistently increased uh, year over year. Um, currently, it's sitting at 340. So it's going to be really tough for me to increase this thing to 1250, which is what the or, or 1280, which is what the statistics are telling me. Um, man, you know. Like I said, it, you know, numbers don't lie. So let's go ahead and let's increase that to 1280 because that's what it has done in the past. Uh, that, that's a huge number, but, um, you know, why not? All right. Uh, other liabilities, a uh, relatively small number, um, and it's jumped around a lot. So, um, you know, I'm just going to stick with the um, statistics here. Uh, and we have it at 129. It's currently at one. Uh, 22 roughly. All right. Lease. Uh, now, the interesting thing about this company is the parent company is in Mexico and they own a bunch of subsidiaries uh, as well as Southern Copper. And so what happens is, is that these companies do business with each other. And so um, I'm thinking that what's happening is the right of use assets are being booked on this company's balance sheet as an asset because they have a contract saying that they can um, use these these properties w with with the lease, right? Um, and then the lease liability um, that they owe for using these properties happens to be the exact same. Um, and typically, um, that's not the case when you're dealing with an outside party. But when you're dealing with a friend, right, your friend is just going to charge you whatever it costs them. So um, the the asset that's on the balance sheet happens to be the liability on the balance sheet as well. So it's a complete wash. And that has been the case uh, year after year, at least the last three years. And so uh, that's why you see uh, the use asset at 884 and the lease at 884. So th those wash each other out. No point in even including them. But they're there. So I have them in. If I move one, I have to move the other, basically, uh, is why that's important. All right. Um, interest liability. Um, this is interest that is owed by the company on their debt. Uh, pretty stable, again, uh, like most uh, debts for these mega cap companies. A slight increase uh, year to year and then flat. So uh, statistically, you know, it can be 100, it can be 96. Uh, I'm just going to keep it flat at the at the 98.6. Um, all right. Uh, the environmental 
Um, part of the balance sheet is interesting. Um, South America, specifically Peru, uh, has uh, laws which state that any sort of mining activity uh, has to have a plan in place and have money allocated to closing those mines. So all of the mines that Southern Copper operates in Peru um, has not only a plan to close the mine, but also they have to allocate money towards the closing of their mine, even though closing the mine is not going to happen for years and years. So it's it's something on the balance sheet that's there because legally it has to be, but they're not actually spending uh, much of this money at all. And so um, what that means for me is that this is money that is kind of like cash because again, they have to keep it on the balance sheet, but it is cash in their bank account. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's just like uh, restricted use cash basically, which is they have it, but technically they can't spend it, but they can. <laughs> so um, that's, that, that I think um, means that when you look at this, this net um, that for the company, um, you can probably add another maybe half of this to this balance in, in, in all actuality, right? So anyway, um, the balance sheet uh, ha has, has not consistently grown. It's kind of all over the place, up 25, down 6. Um, and so it's currently, uh, well, 2021, it was at 10.4. Um, and statistically, we're saying that that can be anywhere from, um, you know, 99 to increasing to, um, you know, 11.5. It's currently at 82. I have a prediction at 9,000. Now, this prediction is not based on these historical numbers. This prediction is based on all the numbers uh, here in yellow. All right. And so uh, the reason why that's important, uh, E19, yeah, the reason why that's important is because um, I, I want to know whether or not my predicted numbers make any sense based on historical numbers for the actual balance sheet balance, okay? Um, another thing um, that uh, was really important to me when I went through this is looking at what percentage decrease um, there is between 2021 and my predicted number of 2022. And it's a 13% decrease. Um, now, the balance sheet has increased 25% before. So a 13% drop is not out of the realm of possibility. Um, and I think a lot of this again has to do with the price of copper. Um, because again, this is pretty much a commodity stock, meaning that it trades with the price of copper. So, um, you know, 13%, not out of the realm of possibility. Um, but again, it's one of those situations where it's like, man, it's hard to see um that really happened you know if we were to use a statistical uh number here uh that gets us to 9320 which is really close to the 9000 anyway so um you know it's it's unfortunate but i have to assume that the balance sheet is going to decline um uh, by by 13% uh which is probably in line too with the the price of copper all right the other thing uh really cool about this company is that they haven't had any ish share issuances, meaning that their ratios um, remain stable. They, they do not plan on issuing any shares. They haven't talked about selling any shares. Um, they do, I think, have a share buyback program, um, but um, I think it's completely exhausted or almost exhausted. So uh, don't expect to, to have any um, changes in a share count at all. Um, that gives us a price to book, uh, well, a book price rather of $10.27. Currently the stock price is, uh oh, what is the stock price? I think it's 49. Oh shoot, this is what I get for playing around. Yeah, I think the stock price is like 49. 
see if I can find it real fast. Mm. I think I was looking at the, um, yeah, at the copper price, not the, the, um, the share price. So I don't know, but I, I think it's close to like 49, 42 or something similar to that. Um, so anyway, um, based on the current price that gives us a price to book of four dollars and 81 cents um historically it's been three seven five four seven three and then the high of 2021 633 and remember uh you know we're calling this a, a covid low roughly of four seven three uh, but you get back here to 2019 is 375. So this is an interesting company um, in that, um, again, it trades on the copper price, but we're also seeing a consistent increase in the price to book. So um, this tells me that we're seeing market sentiment um, constantly increase uh, for this company. And I can see that being the case because um, everyone keeps talking about how copper is integral in this green economy and this green energy uh, that the government keeps pushing and how important it is and, and how like no matter what happens, copper is going to be in demand, even though we're seeing a, a, a price drop uh, right now in the price of copper. Uh, it's still of of, of uh, almost a fifty percent increase of where it was in twenty nineteen. So, you know, um, currently, you know, price of the book is is five uh, thirty two, and again, this is based on the current price of forty nine dollars and forty two cents. Um, again, predicting um, price of the book of 481 if we push this stock price to 56 which is why i did this um, that gives us 545 if we push the price to 60 gives us 584 i saw the stock price go all the way to 70 uh, this past year and that gives us um uh price to book of 681 which is uh, definitely more in line with um, what it has been statistically. Let's let's quickly let's quickly see what that is. I am curious. DVA. Uh oh. There we go. I'm curious to see. What the stats say on this? There's too many decimals. All right. And then let's do this. So we, if we assume that it's going to continue to increase as it has, that gives us a price to book of $7.63, which is exactly, um, where we are now based on uh current uh book value but we'd have to get a price of almost 77 dollars 78 dollars uh to get us there so um this is what i'm looking at uh as far as book price goes okay so uh, currently at $49.42, that gives us a price to book uh, of 4.81, which is historically low for this company. Okay. Now, um, it is very possible that market sentiment can change uh, to get this uh, price to book ratio down to 4.81. It's definitely been there before. Um, I think, though, that there has to be a dramatic uh, decrease in demand in order for that to happen. You know, we're talking about a COVID low of $4 and, and, and 73 cents. 
or, or 4.73 rather uh, for a price to book. Um, so, you know, and, and, you know, market sentiment um, um, back in COVID times. And remember, this is based on the highest price of 2020, not, not the lowest price. The highest price of 2020 was 4.73. And so in order to get us to the highest, uh, uh, and, and, and this is why I'm, I'm using this, right? So this is assuming 49.42 is the current price, but this is assuming that 49.42 is the highest uh, that the stock is going to ever be in the year 2022. OK, that that's what we're saying right now. Right. Like it's not going to get any higher than what it is today. And that's how you get a, a what's called a fair valuation, meaning that the stock price is as high as it can possibly go. And that's it. Right. If that is the case. Right. If that is the case, then for the year of 2020, we will have a price to book of four point eight one. OK, now in 2021, it was six point three three. It's a huge drop off, it's a huge drop off that has not happened in the last three years has not happened in the last three years, okay? In 2020, the highest stock price still gave us a price to book of 4.73. Does sentiment for this particular industry, copper specifically, um, get down as, as low as the, the 2020? I don't think so. I don't think so, right? Um, does the price to book, does market sentiment increase from 2021? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Um, statistically, um, again, this thing can go anywhere from, see here, from 5.03 to that, that seven that we saw. So the question is, at what price point do we get a price to book of five? So let's see. So there we go. Uh oh. I'm going to stop it at, there we go, at 52. So at $52, um, we get a statistical significant uh, number of, uh, of, uh, of 5.03 uh, for book value, um, which is, again, statistically significant. Um, however, that does mean that there is a drop off uh, from 2021 to 2022. OK. Which, again, is definitely possible. Um, the current the current number. I want to go back to that again. The current number. I think it's like forty nine, forty two. Um, the current number is five dollars, uh, five point three two. That's based on current quarter numbers on the balance sheet, right? Which is very close to that, that five, but it's still a drop from 2021, which again is, is very possible. Now, um, I do want to go back and take a look at some of these numbers uh, that were contentious, right? So, um, the first thing was uh, receivables continuing to increase, um, which is not a great thing because we want to see receivables mean that companies have contracted uh, to purchase uh, copper and other products from this company, but have not yet paid for them. Right. Um, and so we want to see that in, uh, we want to see that decrease, uh, but historically it has increased. So uh, I, I don't think we're going to mess with that number. Uh, inventory, we kind of already talked about that. Uh, it's possible for inventory to decrease, but again, with the falling price of copper and the fact that we already see an increase from 2021 to current, um, I, I, I don't expect that number to fall. Um, tax, again, uh, is kind of all over the place. No telling where that's going to go. Uh, it's currently at 660. And again, this is on the balance sheet, meaning that this is taxes that they owe as they pay the taxes. Uh, this number is going to come down. Right. But again, that's going to reduce cash. And again, how do we increase cash? We can only increase cash by either uh, selling off property, selling off inventory, selling off investments um, or um, 
Yeah, that's it. There, there is no other way. Um, now, an interesting thing here is that, um, again, this whole environmental is actually called um, is actually called retirement of assets. That's the way it's it's is labeled in their books. Uh, retirement of assets. I don't understand it uh, completely. I don't. Um, are revisions being made to this? I have to assume so, because though from what I understand, uh, it is a plan that the company puts in place and they have an idea of how much that plan will cost them. Right. And that's how they come up with the number. If somewhere they decide that, hey, this, this plan is going to cost us less then this number comes down, right? And we see that being the case, you know? I mean, like it's been kind of all over the place, but it has um, increased consistently, you know? 81%, 12%, uh, statistically speaking, it can be anywhere from 600 to 1,000. Um, it's currently at 769. I'm saying it's gonna stay flat. If this number decreases, which historically I don't see that happening, um, then, you know, that will again, add to cash because it's already cash that they have. And then that cash now becomes available to them. It's no longer restricted. So that can have a, a huge uh, impact because we're talking about maybe adding another, what, 200 to this 23. So, I mean, not, not definitely not enough to get you from 23 to 45, right? Um, but, um, yes, don't know. I mean, taxes is the, the biggest thing. I think, um, the problem is it's increased by so much over the last three years. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to, to say that it's going to remain flat or it's not going to increase. Uh, but that does seem to be, um, one of the biggest factors here, um, to changing this net number. Uh, to 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 get a a, a, a better um, book price, but let's let's do that just real quick here, just for fun. Um, let's let's leave it even. Let's say it's going to stay flat from year to year, and so that gives us a book price now of ten sixty five, which is really not. Uh, much different uh, price the book now of 464 which again is lower than 2020 so um again that says to me that this uh stock price currently is undervalued uh because it has to be higher to get us even to the the 2020 number right so again you know if we put it at uh 54 or i'm sorry yeah, well, since I changed the, the taxes, um, go back. Because again, I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with the tax. I just don't. I don't know what to do with the tax. Um, we just go with the statistics, though. It's going to jump all the way up to 12, almost 1300. Um, and then, like I said, a price of roughly $52 uh, puts us right in line with uh, a, again a drop in price the book um, but still within um, you know the realm of uh, what the statistics uh, say it can do which still undervalues the stock by um, by what almost nine percent so um, that's that let's let's take a look now at the uh, income statement because I think that's going to really um, tell the tale now again this is a commodity stock so um, the, the book value is, was what it's going to trade on, um, uh, closer to, uh, the, the price of copper for sure. Um, uh, but you know, the company does generate a profit. And so, um, that, that has to mean something, uh, for the, the stock analysis and valuation. Um, so, uh, 2021, um, Income was 109. It has increased year over year uh, with the 
uh, price of, of copper. Uh, again, price of copper is, is dropping a bit. So uh, I expect that the revenue is going to drop as well. Uh, currently for the quarter, they produce 2300 of revenue. If we extrapolate that, extrapolate that out over uh, four quarters, we're talking about revenue of roughly uh, 8,000, which is a drop uh, from the 2021 number. Um, I assumed that the uh, revenue is going to continually increase as it has done over the last three years. Uh, whether or not that remains the case, I don't know. Maybe we can play around with that. Uh, but definitely increasing uh, the sales and income will definitely uh, uh, increase that, that cash position that we talked about. All right. Um, cost of goods sold. This was very difficult. I spent a lot of time with this one. Um, typically, cost of goods um is directly related to what's called the gross margin right gross margin is your revenue minus the money that it costs you to make that revenue this is not the money that you spend on salaries um or or uh, any of your expenses like taxes and whatnot this is strictly the money that you spend to actually produce the thing that you're selling right Gross margin is something that gets looked at very closely by everyone, not only company management, but also uh, uh, stock uh, analysts as well. And so ideally, you want your gross margin to remain the same or improve. OK, um, historically, this company has been kind of all over the place, uh, relatively speaking. Right. So. Uh, cost of goods, um, you know, jumped 9% um, 19, 20, 20, but the revenue improved by 10%. So that means that they, they did really good there, right? Okay. Cost of goods fell 1% between 2020 and 2021, but their sales increased 37%. That's really good. Okay. Now, Here's the problem, okay? The problem is in 2019, cost of goods was half of sales. In 2020, cost of goods were half of sales. That's a gross margin, okay? <laughs> Typically that number stays about the same. In 2021, however, cost of goods were much less um then sales uh like maybe let's say 40 percent or something like that now this can happen when you have a lot of inventory just sitting there and then you sell a lot of it meaning that you don't have to spend money to produce the copper if you already have copper and i can really see that being the case um because we had a a, a price jump in copper and typically when you have a price increase in copper, you want to sell as much copper as you possibly can to take advantage of that price increase before the price falls again. So the question is, is are we going to see that in 2020 or is the gross margin going to go back to what it has been uh, the last couple of years, right? Now, with all that being said, statistically, um, this thing is saying that because of the, the kind of jumping around in the numbers that we can see anything from 36 up to four. I'm sorry. Yeah. From 30, all, anything from 36 to 41. Okay. Here's the problem though. If we assume that the income is going to be this, this 12, eight, um, even cost of goods of 4,000 is way too low um, to, to have that make sense. And we already talked about the fact that we expect for inventory to increase or at the, at the most remain flat, or I should say at the least remain flat. Don't expect inventory to decrease, um, not with declining copper prices. That's just not typically how that works not to say it can't happen but typically if the price of copper is falling 
Um, you don't sell as much as you can. You typically hold what you have and wait for prices to increase. Now, as I'm saying this, it's also a possibility that if you think the price of copper is going to continue to fall, maybe you sell a bunch of it now with the anticipation of, you know, I better get rid of it and sell as much as I can because I know the price is going to be much cheaper later. In that case, then we can see inventory fall. We can see cash rise and we can see this cost of goods uh, remain very low. What's going to happen? I don't know. Um, uh, again, statistically speaking, it's not out of the realm of possibility for that to happen. Um, there, you know, it's just hard for me to, uh, to put that down. It's just, but it makes sense though. Right. So, um, the earnings call hasn't mentioned that that's not something that that management is going to divulge, uh, very easily anyway. Maybe if you press them on it, uh, they may say something like that. But for the most part, they're never going to come out and say, oh, yeah, we're selling as much copper as we can as fast as we can because we think the price is going to drop. That's, they're, they're just not going to admit to that. Um, but that may be what, what's happening. I don't know. Um, so what I did was is I just used an absolute arbitrary number. Um, I came up with something a little less than half of the in predicted income. Uh, for cost of goods, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I definitely like to see in a year, <laughs> see how how far off I was because I, I'm sure that um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I get it just like pinpoint accuracy, an arbitrary number around six thousand. Who knows? But that's that's what I have. Um, you know, I may play with that here in a bit just to see what I'll come up with. But anyway, um, so admin fees, this is going to be all the payroll, all the salaries, all that whatnot. And this company's management has done really well with decreasing their expenses, which is what you want to do in a for profit business, which is increase revenue and decrease expenses. Um, it was 125 in 2021. That number can get anywhere from 121 or it can go up to 129. Uh, we're assuming it's going to drop to 122. Currently, for the quarter, uh, it's at 31. Again, if you extrapolate that uh, times four, then you come up to that 122 anyway. So I think we're fine there. All right, R&D, uh, also called exploration, uh, is happening in uh, Chile and a few other places where they're actually uh, – exploring for uh, new uh, mining opportunities. That number has uh, consistently increased over the years. So uh, we expect, expect that to be the case. Um, so 51 is what we're predicting is uh, the quarter is at 12. Again, pull that out times four, you're at 48 or 50 anyway. So I think we're fine there. All right, um, this was an interesting thing. So um, see if I can pull this up real quick. I, I was seriously confused by this. Uh, where is it at? Let's look at let's look at this one. I think uh, this is an older um, an older uh, statement, but still works for these purposes. Well, maybe not. Go back and look again. All right, yeah. Okay, this is it. Okay. I just passed it. So interest expense. Typically, on financial statements, um, if there is any sort of um, ambiguity as to whether something is an expense or if it's uh, a income or a gain, they'll they'll specify it okay as you see here with other income see so it's listed as other income and then it says in parentheses expense meaning that if there's any negative numbers here in parentheses it is an expense and not income because the category says income right that's normal 
for whatever reason, and I have not figured this out, and, and kudos to the team at Southern Copper, they put together um, a lot of intricate details uh, for each mine in operation, which is, is awesome um, because you can learn everything you ever want to know about about mining, just going through their reports of all of their uh, mining operations in all these different countries. But um, this particular thing here is really weird, very confusing, and I definitely want to talk to the person who put this together. Sometimes I do go on to LinkedIn and try to find uh, uh, persons in the accounting department that can give me some answers on this stuff. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to go that far uh, on, on this particular issue, but I, I do have questions, right? So interest expense. So clearly we expect this to be an expense. This is going to reduce income. This is going to reduce net profit, right? So we know we're going to subtract these numbers, but they list them as negative. And typically when you list an expense as a negative, that means it's a benefit to the company, meaning that maybe somehow there's an interest expense that they received back or something. I don't know, but I did include this as an expense um, because I'm sure that's what it is. Um, but just to make sure that I kept everything um, um, you know, proper, right? I did make sure to use negative numbers in my analysis, uh, but I did for sure uh, deduct the these numbers from the income to arrive at my net profit. Uh, I just thought that was uh, weird. So uh, historically, uh, it's been pretty stable, the interest expense uh, up 5%, down 1%. Uh, historically, you know, I mean, not historically, statistically, this thing can go anywhere from 360 to, to 400. Uh, it's currently at 96. Again, multiply it times four to get you to a little less than 400. So I'm happy with the, 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 the 399 uh, interest expense. I don't think that's going to move around very much. Uh, there is a second category for interest expense, and this is capitalized interest. Um, the reason why I even broke this out instead of adding it to um, uh, just the, the general interest expense is because capitalized interest isn't actually an expense. It is, it is not actually cash paid out, right? Um, and so just in case there are some numbers that I can play around with, I want to make sure that I have this, this, you know, roughly 30 in here that I can either add or take away from uh, to get to where I want to be with my net profit. Because again, this isn't money that's actually paid out. So uh, we can actually just add 30 to the to the net profit if, if we really wanted to. But as of right now, I don't think it's going to make much difference, but it's there just in case. Um, again, um, really all over the place, down 17, up 15. Uh, so that means it can be anywhere from 27 to 33. Currently at 11, multiply times 4 to get you to 33. So 34, I think, is okay. Um, taxes um, consistently increased. Um, so, um, I expect that to continue pretty straightforward It's currently at 300 for the quarter. So, um, doesn't make sense mathematically, but it was 23 last year. And again, like I said, their taxing regime is way different, um, than what we're used to here in the U S. And so I'm just going to go with the statistics on that one and say, it's going to increase to that 3000, um, it is interesting to note, though, that the percentage change from 23 to 3,000 is nowhere near this 96 percent. It's, it's much closer to something like a 24 or, or 30 percent increase. So, all right, uh, payouts. Uh, payouts, I don't expect um, to change very much. Uh, like I said, Southern Copper is owned uh, by a parent company, and so typically, Southern Copper pays out like something like a dividend or something to the parent company. And so, um, you know, that's really just up to them on how they want to do that. Um, and I think that's the reason why we see just a number kind of all over the place. But it's such a small number that I, I don't uh, think it'll uh, be uh, a, a big deal, honestly. But it is there. And so that gives us a net profit of 32. Um, 
Now, again, historically, the net profit has increased year over year. Statistically, statistically, it could be anywhere from, you know, 3,000 to uh, 52. Um, currently, they're, they're putting out 600 a quarter. Um, so that gets us to like 24 or 3,000, which is why I am okay with this 32 number, which basically reduces uh, this 41 um, by the statistical number. But keep in mind, I do this on purpose to check myself, right? This net profit that we're looking at is based on these numbers here highlighted in yellow. It's not based on the statistical uh, data uh, that we have historically. It just so happens that the net profit that we came up with is actually very close to what it, it is statistically. So that tells us that we're probably right about what we're saying here. Uh, but again, it's important to note that this is a decrease, right? It's a decrease, even though it has increased um, over the last couple of years, this is uh, a, a decrease in, in number. Um, again, um, copper prices falling, demand falling, it's only 600 for this quarter. Let's take a look at, um, take a look at the last six months. It's going to take me a while to get to this. I was reading through some of these notes. That was one chart, but. Another thing, too, I'll mention um, while I'm looking for this is that um, Southern Copper is party to quite a few lawsuits, like a lot of lawsuits. <laughs> almost almost every country that they operate in has sued them for some reason or another. Um, and in all of their notes, they they talk they, they talked about, you know, we think that these claims are baseless. We don't expect uh, any of these lawsuits uh, to to prove to be anything but you know we're going to be upfront and honest and and tell you that hey you know we're we're being sued um but yeah there's like a dozen lawsuits going on and uh i remember reading one lawsuit <clears throat> is actually put on hold until another lawsuit con 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 concludes it's, it's just it's crazy man it's crazy the environmental bs that these companies have to to put up with i mean at the end of the day um you know we use copper and pretty much everything we use i mean we can't just decide to not use copper and copper has to be mined we have to get it out of the earth what do you want the mining company to freaking do i mean they they got to get the copper out I mean, do you just want to not have cars anymore? Like, I don't get it. Like, it's crazy. And, and of course, yeah, I mean, listen, mistakes are going to happen. Um, um, it, it's, it's nothing's going to ever be like perfect, but like, man, I mean, I just, I, I, I said this the other, the other day talking to someone like, it's it's such an American thing, I think, to have this idea that everyone wants to be a billionaire, right? Everyone wants to strive to, to get to that that level of having this quote unquote generational wealth and owning these huge companies that's doing all this and all that. There is a Mexican family that owns Southern Copper, okay? It's a family that's owned it for a very long time. They own a bunch of businesses. They are super duper rich. They don't get talked about in the media, but they're huge and they have a lot of money, right? But man, when I think about like running these companies and doing this thing and then constantly always getting sued for just doing business, I, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't. I don't want to deal with that. Like, that's crazy. I I can't, I can't, I, just, I don't want to. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous.
anyway, uh, net income, uh, six months ended, uh, 2022 is 1200. Um, and this same time last year, it was 1700. So clearly there is a drop, right? Uh, second quarter, 2022 income 434, um, 2021 income was 936. So there is a huge drop huge drop and so I don't make sure we go back uh, yeah yeah exactly 12 17 9 30 4 30 so clearly there's going to be uh, a drop in profit no doubt about it and I'm perfectly fine um, with this statistical um, correlation so I don't think I'm going to play around with any of these numbers here. If anything, if anything, uh, this net profit is going to be actually uh, less uh, than, than what I predicted of 32. So um, and, and, and if I wanted to, um, if I if I wanted to uh, reduce that by a thousand, I can very easily uh, decrease sales or increase cost of goods and this goes back to what i was saying about cost of goods which is statistically speaking cost of goods is supposed to be a lot less but then that's going to um in improve the profit by a lot and i just don't see that happening the, the numbers just don't don't say that it will um and again with that being the case speaking about the cash position um i don't see where cash makes this huge jump um unless again they reduce uh some of these these assets um you know they they did talk about um you know foreign currency uh being uh, a boon for them um uh, because um their accounting is is accounted for in US dollars but in reality uh they're using you know mexican peso they're using uh the peru soul they're using these different uh, south american currencies that even though they are tied to the us dollar um they uh they they are not as inflated as the us dollar meaning that um they're they're relatively stronger currencies in the current environment okay um, so that means that if they have any sort of hedging uh, investments and stuff like that, that that's, that's tied up in this um, this other asset, right? Um, maybe they can sell some, close some, and that'll uh, increase cash. But again, I just don't think it's going to increase it by much. So um, yeah, I'm going to have to definitely uh, play around with that. But either way, um, if the profit sits at 32 that gives us earnings per share of 364 um which is a bit high honestly um because earnings per share this quarter was only 70 cents we extrapolate that out that's only 2.8 um historically though earnings per share uh 468 259 244 um because of the last three years um, you know, increasing uh, profit and sales, um, the the EPS has grown uh, just as much. Uh, statistically speaking, uh, it looks like the EPS can go anywhere from 580 to 340, and 3.6 is in line um, uh, with that statistical significance. Again, uh, this number is not based on any of this historical data. Uh, this is only happens to be uh, a correlation as proof uh, that this number is probably right. You know, if we let's just quickly reduce and see by a thousand. This is a, this is a arbitrary number anyway. So let's increase it by a thousand. That gets us to a profit of uh, 22. Uh, that gets us to an EPS of 2.5, which is lower than the 2020 uh, demand, which I sincerely doubt will happen. 
I mean, something has to happen drastic to demand for copper for us to see that. And I just don't, I just don't see that happening in the next six months. So, um, obviously I, I can't be certain that the profit will be in that 3000 range. Um, especially based on current, um, numbers, um, you know, also looking at the EPS, I just, it, it's hard for me to say that, but it makes sense though. It makes sense mathematically. So, um, I have a PE of 18, um, which is this, now this number is based on historical data. Um, I just looked at the average, uh, PE ratio for the last three years. And again, this is based on the highest uh, stock price for that year. And as you can see, the PE has jumped around quite a bit. Uh, it jumped up 49% between 19 and 20, and then it decreased 30% from 20 to 2021. Statistically though, uh, the PE can go anywhere from 12 to 20. Uh, so 18 is, you know, not quite 20, definitely not 12. Um, I, I said this, about the stock in the book value, I don't see sentiment uh, changing that much um, for a basic, like, you know, if demand gets hit really, really hard, then yes, for sure, we can see sentiment really change for the basic material sector. But, you know, when it comes to the basic material sector of the economy, um, it's going to um, be less volatile than something like consumer cyclicals, right? So I think that even, and, and we know that the consumer cyclicals and, and real estate and so forth are, are not doing great, uh, but I don't ever expect basic materials uh, to, to, to get down uh, as far as they have gone or, or possibly will go. And it's hard to even imagine consumer cyclicals and, and, and real estate falling much further than what they have, but it is possible, especially again, being that we know that we're in a downtrend. So uh, a PE of 18, I, I think is sort of kind of, you know, around where I think we can go. And it gives us a price of, 60, of $66, which definitely undervalues uh, the stock by quite a bit. Again, this is a commodity uh, stock, so it does not really trade on earnings at all clearly um <laughs> but with that being said um you know the stock price was just 70 dollars a couple months ago so um you know again this 18 pe is not out of the realm of possibility um and then with earnings per share 3.6 um which again i, I don't think we're gonna see um but let me see again the profit would have to yeah, the profit would have to, let's, let's look at that again. So I wasn't looking at the, the share price when I did that. Let's see. Profit gets down to 2000, EPS of 2.5. Uh, if we, if we continue with a PE of 18, um, that overvalues, um, the stock currently, um, which is hard to take. Um, so let's do this. Um, but again, this 18 is literally an average of the last three years. If we do a straight up, uh, D38, if we do a straight up, uh, statistical significance here, we're talking about, um, a high of 50, 73. We're talking about a low of 29 and we're talking about a flat 40.23. So um, what we're looking at here is we're looking at two uh, possibilities. Again, this is market sentiment, okay? Market sentiment um, concerning uh, PE concerning a stock that does not typically trade based on earnings and, and PE anyway. Um, so got to take this with a grain of salt, but we're talking about two scenarios, a flat PE, a declining PE that overvalues the stock currently. 
okay? And we're talking about um, a possible increase in PE uh, that undervalues the stock. Again, sentiment has to improve in order for that PE ratio to increase. And does sentiment improve? Possible. Is sentiment as low as it can get right now for the basic material sector for copper? Um, I don't think so. Um, it's, it's hard to say, especially because, um, again, you're talking about a basic material, something that is always going to be needed. It's not going anywhere unless we stop making everything. <laughs> like, we're going to, to definitely need copper. Another another funny thing about this is, um, and this got talked about in the earnings call too. Um, if in fact they they mine less copper, right? Let's say they stop producing copper. They still have an inventory of copper that they are going to sell, no question about it. Um, and they are one of the largest producers of copper in the world. Okay. And we have to imagine that if this company does that, all the other copper companies are going to do the same thing. Meaning that like if they expect demand to fall a lot, like if they don't expect any demand at all, they'll stop mining copper. They're not going to keep pulling copper out the ground if they don't think they're going to sell it. Right. It makes more sense for them to stop paying laborers, to stop running machines and to just sell what they have in inventory. Um, and that's going to definitely increase the price of copper, right? Um, the other thing is that in a rising rate environment, inflation typically increases the price of commodities until demand deteriorates to such a level that people cannot afford the commodity at the new higher price. And then the price starts to come down. But if the price starts to come down with the commodity, that typically restarts the economy because prices have gotten so far down that people can then afford them again. And that kind of restarts everything and you start having some growth. So um, again, take it with a grain of salt because the company doesn't typically trade on, on earnings. Um, I, I don't I don't see I don't see um, that type of sentiment um, declining to that point. I don't. Um, and again, because this thing doesn't trade on earnings, an increase in in um, in, in sentiment based on earnings, it, it doesn't. Um, I don't, I don't really see that happening either. However, it can, right? Um, and that gets us to a, a price of $50.73, which is actually in line with um, what we're looking at uh, for the book value. And again, that's based on uh, the profit of 2000 um, when in actuality, um, statistically speaking, it's probably going to be closer to the, the 3000 profit right um and that gets us to a price of 73.55 uh based on improving sentiment on earnings um and then just because we're talking about it let's now look at a flat uh sentiment i mean it doesn't change much at all kind of just stays where it is that gets us undervalued again at 58 and then if we reduce uh sentiment on the pe um that gets us to fairly valued at 43. So uh, I have to say that this company is fairly um, to undervalue uh, my price point. Uh, currently, I'm going to put at 52. Um, but, you know, we, we talked about, again, this this price to book increasing. Uh, year over year. And again, this is sentiment. This is what the company actually trades on. Um, it was 633 in 2021. So if we see a price to book anywhere near that, that six, uh, we're talking about a price point of $56. Um, so I'm going to go so far to say that I'm going to put a price target on this 
of, um, let's say 52 to 57 dollars, uh, which again undervalues this stock. Um, even if we were to look at the trade on earnings, I have to say that this stock is fairly valued to undervalued. So again, 52 to 57 is my target.